Good evening. It's good to have you uh, come to worship tonight at Shepherd of the Valley. We're on the last Sundays of the church here, and tonight, this um, weekend, we talk about and that sometimes sounds a little bit um, scary or frightening. And in his second coming, it's actually a very good thing. We're going to find the order of worship that is out in the service folder and also is on the screens for you. It's, tonight it's going to be Service of the Word, page 38. Also, the liturgy is found in the red hymnal, but the psalm and the hymns are in the blue hymnal. Uh, the new hymn, no. So, that's all printed and laid out for us. Uh, so, we'll begin with the singing of the first hymn for Lord, how shall I meet you? We'll sing all five stanzas. Now come, send 
forth your beams most cheering and guide us safely home. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. Uh, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all of your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. Your word, O oh Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues forever. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God Almighty, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may always look forward to the end of this present evil age and the day of your righteous judgment. Keep us steadfast and true in living faith and present us at last holy and blameless before you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the Old Testament, the book of the prophet Malachi. This is the last chapter of uh, the Old Testament, and these are the six verses that are in that chapter. Um, you're going to hear more about this during the message today. It was a fiery message that the prophet Malachi sent to a people who are kind of spiritually... Uh, um, in the doldrums. They weren't real focused on the Lord, and Malachi is there to call them back with the Lord's message to help them and bless them. Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. The day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or branch will be left to them, but for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays, and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Then you will trample on the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, 
the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. The word of the Lord. We'll join in the singing of the psalm of the day, uh, Psalm 98. Uh, we'll hear that introduced, and then, and then we'll sing. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous Things. Shout to the Lord, joy on the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the sound of singing. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The second reading uh, for this um, Sunday is written in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5 to 10. The Thessalonian Christians are remarkable in that they, right from the early days of their faith, they were persecuted. And um, um, Paul writes them and says, don't worry, there's going to be justice. Evil will be put down, God's people will be glorified, and there's hope in that, and that's kind of all the readings have that idea that there's hope because the Lord is going to come and bring justice eventually, and that gets us through the tough days. We'll read now, verse 5. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right, and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. On the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. That's us. This includes you because you believed your testimony to you, our testimony to you. The word of the Lord. 
Alleluia. Be faith for all those. Oh, excuse me. It's in the bulletin. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the victor's crown. Alleluia. We sing. Alleluia. 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 These words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. I would invite those who would like to rise uh, to do so, and out of, we'll hear the words of the Lord Jesus. Now, uh, from Luke chapter 21, beginning with verse 5, uh, Jesus was asked a question about the beauty of the temple, and he makes the point that uh, it's not going to be around forever. And he launches into a teaching on the end of the world. And uh, two points here. First of all, he says, don't be deceived, um, but be faithful to the point of death. Stay, stay with the Lord, and everything will work out. Some of his disciples were remarking how about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones, with gifts dedicated uh, to God, but Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, <coughs> they asked, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, watch out that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name claiming I am he, and the time is near. Uh, do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprising, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilence in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to, the syn to synagogues and put you in prison and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me, but make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm, and you will win life. Maybe a little better translation there, you'll gain life. Uh, we don't win it, but God gives it to us. Uh, this is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. We'll join in singing the hymn of the day. The day is surely drawing near. We'll sing all six stanzas. The day is surely drawing near. When Jesus God's anointed shall with great majesty appear as judge of all appointed all mirth and laughter then shall cease when flames on flames will still increase as scripture truly teaches and all the earth be shaken that Graves are found. 
God for our meditation is that first uh, lesson, the reading from Malachi, the last chapter of the Old Testament Bible. Um, so you've heard that read, we pray. Dear Jesus, in these last days of the world, we need your word more than ever. So bless the message tonight in my speaking your word and fill us with understanding and joy and strength through your grace. To that end, bless us as we meditate on your word. Amen. Dear friends who live under God's shining grace, it's great that we do. Glenn Fry, singer, songwriter, probably know who he is. He's had a lot of popular songs, and um, in 2006, he released the song, No More Cloudy days. And I read through the words, I've heard the song before, uh, I think I understand what he's singing about, which is a man is singing that a lady would 
walk with him hand in hand through life. And if they do that uh, because of their happiness, their romantic love, there'll be no more cloudy days. Um, it's sentimental. And um, it's really not true. I know lots of uh, men and women who are married in our congregation have been married for decades. And while they love each other and enjoy walking down life's path hand in hand, uh, they will tell you there are cloudy days. They happen, right? Um, but this is an expression that you hear. And when you hear cloudy days, it's not uh, the white puffy clouds that go over our head. They're here, they're gone usually, unless it's a big storm or something. But when a, a songwriter, a poet, a preacher talks about cloudy days, we're talking about something else. Trouble and hardship, sadness, loneliness, um, loss, things like that. I'm going to add just something to that tonight when I talk about uh, the whole idea of cloudy days and us needing sunshine. We're going to look at the spiritual side of things. And I looked in the Bible, it's interesting, both the prophets Ezekiel and Joel do use the expression cloudy days uh, in talking about judgment. And, and usually the Bible uses the word darkness, um, but they, they did use that expression. Um, I would say we're in cloudy days now as far as the world goes, um, judgments hanging over the world and all the evil. But here's the thing, I'm not here to talk about them tonight, I'm here to talk about you and me. And I do think we have clouds over us, spiritually speaking. Some days we, we feel kind of lost, we feel uh, guilty. And uh, I have good news for you and it actually is not me, but it's the prophet Malachi, he talks about sunshine. Now, I'm going to change that up a little bit. He talks about sunshine as we think from the sun, but he's actually using the sun that we have in sunshine as a picture for Jesus and his blessings. So I'm going to do a couple things tonight. One is I'm going to capitalize the word S for sunshine. Sun here means really is pointing to S-O-N, the Son of God. And then also, I'm going to break up the word sunshine. I know normally it's one word, but I'm, this is poetic license on my part. The sun shine or shines for your cloudy days. Good news for you and me, something we need. Uh, Malachi's people were needing sunshine. Um, they had been free from captivity for 100 years. They had been in Babylon, far off, and God had brought them back. And I think in the early years, they had been extremely happy and thankful. Wow, we're free again. We're home. We rebuilt the promised land. But you get a hundred years later, and they've lost a lot of the buzz, the enthusiasm. Um, in fact, they've turned rather inward to themselves. And um, I can say that because there were a couple things going on, and God is not happy. One, they were divorcing the wife of their youth and marrying wives who were worshiping false gods. So it was a really bad situation. They were turning away from the Lord. And so what God did is he slowly but surely took away his hand of blessings. Their economy, uh, their lives were kind of miserable. And what do they do? They turn to God and go, where's the God of justice? They blame him for their problems, which they really authored. And as they're miserable in their sins, I can tell you very much, and Malachi knew this, they needed the sunshine of God's grace. Now, I'll be honest with you, I think that's sort of true for us. Now, not everything I say here is going to apply to you directly, but I bet some of it does. People minimize church attendance. People, when they do come to church, they don't listen to the message or they don't, they don't believe what the pastor's saying. Or people go on a diet in their prayer life. In other words, try to get by with the minimum possible that you can uh, in prayer. Uh, skimping on offerings, uh, things like that, showing love to others. And what does God do? He slowly but surely pulls back his hand of blessings. And what do we see? A recessed economy. Rascals for rulers. Crime waves and so on and so forth. And what do we do? 
I'm afraid that we aren't much different from the Jewish believers of Malachi's day. We cry out, where is the God of justice? Hey, God, what are you doing about all these problems that are affecting me? We need the sunshine of God's grace. And so Malachi's bringing it, and it's good for us too. He announces to them, hey, you want to hear some news? God is coming the day. The day of God's wrath. The day of justice. The arrogant, the evildoer, they're going to be burnt to stubble. Now, I think one of the things that I did, and, and you may too, is we kind of associate fiery preaching with the Old Testament prophets. It, and they did. That's not untrue. But it's there in the New Testament. Did you hear the words of St. Paul tonight in his Second Thessalonians 1 verse 8 that was a part of the reading? Jesus will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God promised judgment uh, for all those who reject his grace. Uh, they will be punished. Some people might scoff at this and say, whoa, uh, can God really, is he really going to do this? Um, remember what Jesus said in Matthew 24? Um, they, he said, just as in the days of Noah, when people were eating and drinking and doing all their stuff and the floodwaters came and swept them away, so will it be in the day of the Son of Man. Life is going to be as we've seen it all, and whoosh, it's going to be swept all the way. It's all going to be over. So Jesus is very serious about this. Now, what's God doing? These believers, and I think this happens to us too, knew the Lord, believed in the Lord, but they weren't turning to him in repentance. And what this really is, is a call to repentance. And what I think happened is they were so busy grumbling and complaining about what was going on in their world that God said, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. You better look in the mirror here. And I think that's true for us, isn't it? We worry about the elections. We worry about the economy. We worry about all this stuff. And then when the things don't go the way we want, we're, God, we, I'm praying. You know, what are you doing up there? And God says, look in the mirror. You think everybody out there, your rascal rulers and everybody else, they're all bad? Look in the mirror of my law. There isn't a one of us who is innocent. And God ever so seriously but gently says to you and me, repent of your sins. And God is good in doing that. Um, Jesus, once they asked him about a news item, there was this tower that had fallen. Some bad stuff happened. And, Jesus, what do you think of that? And in Luke 13, he says, repent or you too will perish. God wants us to think about this, not get caught up in all the drama and all the, the noise that we forget about our relationship with him. And then, to the repentant, some of the most beautiful gospel in the entire Old Testament. Best good news. Um, verse 2. But for you who revere my name, for the believer, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its rays. In the old Bibles it was wings rise with healing in his wings. I like that one too. Our God is a God of justice, and that's good. But he's also a God of healing, and that's really good for you and me. The sun here, as I mentioned, as I introduced this, S-U-N is really S-O-N, the sun of God. The sun in the sky is a picture of Jesus. The sun comes with its warmth uh, on a cold day, with its light dispelling the darkness, and that's the Son of God. The Son of God is our, the Son of the Lord of Righteousness. He brings spiritual healing to you and me. We need that light. We need that warmth. Jesus uh, invites us even to come to him. And I've got a passage or two I'm going to share with you here. Uh, he says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and a thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And that dawn was when Jesus was born into the world, as you see in the picture. Um, he is our, the Savior who brings light, 
Jesus himself said that uh, in John 8, 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have uh, the light of life. Uh, Rembrandt, brilliantly, he was a master of light in paintings. Look at the most bright part of that painting. It's Jesus on the cross. He knew where the light was, and Rembrandt accurately portrayed that. Jesus, with his perfect life, with his perfect death, took away our sins. Uh, when he comes to us with healing, it's not at a price. I know our doctors sometimes charge us for, you know, for what they do. It's free. It's a gift. Uh, the forgiveness of sins uh, and peace with God. Um, and so uh, he brings healing in his rays or healing in his wings. And that's so important in a world full of injustice. We have to remember, yeah, we have injustice inside ourselves. But Jesus has taken that away. Jesus has made us God's children. And so the warmth of God's love should be in our hearts. The light of his purpose, his plans, should also be for there, uh, there for us. And because there's joy in being reconciled to God. How do you react to good news? Um, don't we react with joy, with energy? Um, Malachi uses a farmer picture. He says, it's like calves being released from the stall. I actually went online and looked at a YouTube video because I had never seen a calf released in, in spring from a stall. Wow, that thing is bouncing all over with joy because it's being released. It's not confined after the long winter. And the other calves were there jumping with it. It's, it's kind of cute to watch. Um, this is a picture of us, the believer. N not just on Judgment Day, it's then too, but even now, the evil of our world saps our joy and our energy so often. In fact, I think the more you read the news, the more that can happen and may happen. And Jesus comes to us with his good news. And he says, yeah, but I'm in control. And I'm in control of your salvation. I've taken care of you. And I'm going to continue to take care of you and love you and watch over you. You know, it just brings the joy and the energy back into us. And we are the calves. Even now in our hearts, even if you don't feel like kicking up your heels anymore, you can still do that in your heart and mind because you have a God and Savior who's fantastic, who's awesome, who will always be there with joy for you if you just look to him. And that's what I want to talk about next. Um... I don't think I have to convince you that light is a good thing. I'm going to have you do something, Sean. Would you please reach behind you up on the wall, top left, and just turn the light out for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's not too bad because we've got other li lights on. But you wouldn't probably want to do the whole worship service this way. And if I had Sean turn everything off, that would be kind of bad, wouldn't it? Sean, please turn it back on. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Light is important. You don't want to stumble around in the darkness. We can't just have light at our baptism. We can't just have the light of God in our life when we become a Christian. But that is something that we need throughout our life because as we demonstrated, you need, you need light. And we have that light for us. And that's what we want to see. We remember where the sunshine is is found. And the psalm writer, Psalm 119, 105, tells us, Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. God's word shines the light. And Malachi points the, the Jewish people to what they knew, the law of Moses. Remember the law of my servant Moses and the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all of Israel. You guys want to walk in the light? Do you want to have my blessings? you want things to go better? walk in my word. That's what he was telling them. And that message worked. We later on, much later on in history, find Mary and Joseph, a very poor couple, uh, didn't have a lot, and yet they're happy. And they, are they hung on to God's word. Anna and Simeon in the temple, when baby Jesus was taken to the temple uh, to be named, um, they're there and they're full of joy in a very dark time in history. 
um, because God's word, God's promises had sustained them. We have the word today. Now, one of the things to note about the law of Moses, it, it wasn't just guidance through the commands. It was also God's promises. Can you picture Mary and Joseph going up to Jerusalem? Maybe Jesus is 12 years old now. That one time he went up there for the celebration. And they go into the temple, and they're sinners too. So they gave the lamb of sacrifice to the priest, and he killed that lamb, and he put it on the burnt altar, the altar to burn it. It was a burnt offering. And the priest would turn to them and say, your sins have been taken away through this sacrifice, and maybe remind them that the Savior was coming someday to make the ultimate sacrifice, that he was going to take care of sins forever. If the priest knew God's word, he would tell them those things. And so they had this amazing gospel message, and that message is what you and I need tonight. You come to church, what do you expect to hear? Yeah, I'll talk about sins, I'll even talk about Judgment Day, because that's what we do in the fall, about this time in November. But I'm going to talk about Jesus. Because he is the one who sacrificed himself for you, for me, for all the people of the world. There we see God's love, and that is what keeps you and I walking in the light. Not just following God's commands, doing what's right, we do that, but knowing Jesus as our Savior. We don't ever want to lose that. And for that reason, God doesn't just leave it up to you or to me individually. He sends his messenger. Um, Malachi, actually the guy's name, the prophet's name, means messenger. And he had a message to deliver. And he told them, this guy is coming, Elijah. He's going to come before the great and awful day of the Lord. Now they had to think about it for a minute. Wait a minute, uh, Elijah's dead. He was gone long before Malachi left. And so what Malachi is prophesying is that a man would come in the spirit of Elijah. One of the things about Elijah is in a time when priests and people were turning away from God, Elijah took a stand and he was a fiery preacher. And guess who did the same thing many years later, about 400 years, well, more than 400 years later? John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the second Elijah. And he called, when, when the religious authorities were saying, oh, just keep the rules, just be a good person, he was saying, repent of your sins. You aren't keeping God's commands. And look to God for mercy and for forgiveness. And people flocked to him, hundreds and thousands of people, because he had a message that, really spoke to their hearts and to their lives, and so he was the one who prepared them for the coming of Jesus. Today, God sends his messengers. Uh, I don't know, I don't claim to be John the Baptist, I'm not sure I'm even as tall as he was, uh, but I have the privilege of sharing with you God's real word, the fiery words of the law, the, the healing words of the gospel, and that's light that you need. And it's not light that you, although we'd like you to study the Bible on your own and, and, and have your devotions, God sends his messengers today for a purpose, uh, to help us to understand, to explain the scriptures. And I'm glad that you come to hear God's word because there's beautiful blessings. One of the things that Malachi says is the children will be turned towards their parents and the parents towards the children. Um, you hear the awful stories today, perhaps, where... Um, Parents hurt their children, children hurt their parents, and so on. Um, when there's no light of God in people's hearts, um, things can happen. But Malachi is saying the opposite here. When the light of God is in our hearts, when we have Jesus there, the parents love their children. They talk about Jesus. And the children love their parents. And... There are blessings. We, as a congregation, get along. We uh, love each other in the Lord. Um, this is what Malachi was pointing to. Um, it's interesting that he ends the whole Old Testament, the last verse, six, on an ominous note. He says, if you don't do this, um, I'm going to strike the land and destroy it. Wow. Not sure I would end a sermon that way, but Malachi was moved by the Holy Spirit to make those his final words. I think it was because they didn't always want to walk in the light. And God, with great patience, was calling out to them, I'm serious, you need to do this. And that urgency is still there 
today. So, got a question for you. Would you pray for Judgment Day? I think once in a while we're a little bit, hmm, I don't know if I'd want to do that. The book of Revelation, last book of the New Testament of the Bible, Jesus says, yes, I'm coming soon. What does John answer? The Saint John says, amen, come Lord Jesus. That's a prayer. He's praying. Yeah, Jesus, come back, come on judge, in judgment. I have a book that I use for my daily devotions um, it's a minister's prayer book, and there's a longer title. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, but it's really interesting. They have prayer suggestions for each day of the week. You make up your own prayers, but they give you ideas. On Saturday, the second part of it is on the bottom of the screen. I'm going to read that. Remembrance of the departed. Preparation of the church for the coming of Christ. Do you see where I'm reading there? And then the underlying part. Remembrance of the brevity of life and of the judgment to come. Prayer for a blessed death. So they're suggesting that I pray that Jesus come back, that the judgment day come. Why? Because there's blessings. You and I would join in today and say, come Lord Jesus, because he's going to set everything right at that time. And we say it without fear, because in perfect love there is no fear. God has perfect love for you. He has you in the palm of his hand. You don't have to be afraid. You have a God who has loved you deeply, day after day. That's the whole grace of his sunshine raining down on you each day, the love of God in Jesus. And so, um, you're ready for Judgment Day in faith. And also, you have that sunshine for cloudy days. And so, think of that, please. You have God's sunshine on you. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus, our dear Savior. Amen. We'll join in the Apostles' Creed on page 10 in the bulletin. We will um, recite that together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have our offering plates in the entryway still to uh, if you receive the offering there. If you have not already put your envelope there, we ask you to do that. Those at home are invited to mail in their offerings. We will invite you to rise and continue with the prayer of the church. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, the terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being.
Dear Lord God, we thank you for blessing Kareen Grassi with a successful shoulder surgery. Help her with the pain, help her to heal. We pray that she can get back to church and Bible class uh, in the near future. But until then, Lord, keep her safe and bless her and her husband. Uh, bless the Bergenzers, James and Presley, as they were gifted with uh, a birth of a baby boy, Hunter Leonard. We're thankful and joyful that uh, they had this little baby boy, and we pray that soon we, the child would come to holy baptism uh, to be received by you into your kingdom, Lord. Be with mother and child and father and watch over them and, and bless them. Also, dear Lord, um, you have blessed uh, Pete and Sue Grumman with 50 years of marriage. Um, we ask, O oh Lord, that uh, you continue to watch over them and bless them. You have provided food and clothing. You have provided spiritual bread, the bread of life, Jesus, for them. You've helped them to make decisions, to move to different places in all these years. And we don't know what the future holds, but we know that you will go with them as they walk together the path of life in your name, trusting you uh, to provide for their every need. Continue to bless them, watch over them, and take care of them, uh, and uh, bless them as they celebrate this. In Jesus' name we pray. And, dear Lord, we hear us as we take a moment to bring you our private petitions in a moment of silence. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll join in the singing of the next hymn, 493, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your light appear. The evening is advancing, and darkest night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon is drawing near. The prey Watch and wrestle, at midnight comes the cry. The watchers on the mountain proclaim the bridegroom near. The fort as he approaches with a hallelujah's clear. The marriage feast is waiting, the gates wide open stand. Arise, O heirs and glory, the bridegroom is at the saints who hear in patience your 
heart cross and sufferings born shall live and reign forever when sorrow is no more <coughs> the throne of glory and you shall be whole in triumph lay before him your shining crowns of gold our hope and expectation oh Jesus now appear arise O God long for above this shadowed sphere with hearts and hands uplifted we plead O Lord to save Please rise and be prayed. O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation and bestow us on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated. We'll join in the singing of the final hymn, 923, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. The words are the same. The tune is a familiar tune, but it's not the same one we had in the red hymnal. You'll hear, you'll recognize it when you hear. Jordan, bid my anxious 
fear subside, death of death, and hell's destruction land me safe on Kazai. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee. I will ever forgive to thee. Good evening to everyone. Um, thank you to our organist, ushers, uh, tech person, everybody who helped out. It's much appreciated. Welcome to any visitors we have. It's mostly we're getting a lot of winter visitors in, and um, we're glad to see everyone. Um, sign our guest book if you're visiting tonight, please. So, um, a couple announcements. Just watch the schedule carefully. There are many things going on in the next few weeks going through Thanksgiving into Christmas. Um, probably the biggest of these is the Living Nativity. Um, in fact, Lori's here tonight. If anybody wants to be a character or signed up or is interested, you can speak with her. She wants to this weekend and next fit you out for costumes. So um, she's here for that. Uh, you invite all of you to read through the Nativity notes and please pray for our congregation. Uh, for years and years, we have been known as the church in surprise that does the live nativity, and we'd like to revive that image a little bit this year, and uh, hopefully people will come. We pray for the success of that. All the regular Bible classes and groups will meet this week. Um, I see Living Stones on the 12th on Saturday, so there's something special there that not regular meeting. Um, we will not have Sunday school tomorrow. Our Sunday school teachers and youth are camping this weekend uh, so we'll continue that next week and don't forget coming up also we have a thanksgiving service on the evening of the 23rd at seven o'clock surprise blessings i used to have slides of old surprise and stuff in the past i'm going to update those get we got some new buildings and stores in town we'll look and see the reasons we have to be thankful all that god gives us in our life here in surprise in the surrounding area those are the announcements. Have a great week in the Lord. <clears throat>